Hey everyone, hope you're all doing it very well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, I got a quick one for you and it's ultimately answering a question that I get here on the channel very frequently. We talk about ripple voltage in many past videos. We've shown graphs and seen exactly what it looks like. I'll do the same here in this video, but ultimately what we're gonna be doing is looking up the question that I get asked the most where if your electronic speed control doesn't measure it, so you're not able to obtain data on your specific run, what do you do about ripple voltage? Should you be concerned? That's what we're gonna be diving into in this video. We're gonna be looking at that exact scenario. Now, a very quick review of what ripple voltage is. Ripple voltage is essentially what's happening inside of your electronic speed control. Your electronic speed control needs to fire the phases that exist on your brushless motor. There's three phases that we're dealing with on our brushless motors. Every single time it turns one off, then it turns another Another one on when it goes through this cycle of on off every time that your battery is being loaded with an on cycle you're gonna have a voltage drop and then what happens is it goes back to a resting point a resting voltage and that voltage is going to be higher so the difference between these two values of voltage when a circuit is fired on versus off is what essentially ripple voltage is now that's a fairly simplistic way of looking at it in order to get us started here in this video. Now, when we're dealing with ripple voltage, what we'd expect is there's certain variables that can contribute to ripple voltage and increase its potential to be over the amount that you'd want to see, which is generally about 10% of your nominal voltage, anything in excess of 10%, and that's gonna be a problem. However, if we can't measure it, we don't know exactly where we're at. So what we need to do is look at the characteristics of our setup, and that first looks at things like how much load are you loading up your electronic speed control? If you're using a 150 amp electronic speed control and you're never exceeding 150 amps, you're working within that, chances are this part of your setup is doing pretty good. That ESC is designed to accept a 150 amp load, but there's two other elements that you'd want to look into in addition to this one. Just making sure that this one is okay is not good enough. So the second element that we would want to consider consider is what kind of battery are you using? If you're using a weak battery, we've tested many weak batteries here on the channel. If you are using one of these weak batteries, this is a sign that it could be potentially causing a higher amount of voltage ripple, ripple voltage within your electronic speed control. Under partial throttle, you would expect to see a bigger voltage drop, and it's the voltage drop that causes an issue within the electronic speed control when we're considering ripple voltage. Using a good quality battery pack is a really easy way to get rid of any potential ripple voltage as it is a result of poor performing batteries. And as we said earlier, just because you have number one and number two might be, yes, you're using a good battery pack, and yes, you're working with a relatively low amount of overall current, whether it's peak or continuous, for the specific electronic speed controls rating, this doesn't mean that you're okay. We do need to look at that third element, and the third element is essentially the length of your input leads. This is what I recommend for every single setup. Do not extend the leads of the input side of your electronic speed control. Extending the leads of your electronic speed control is a way that you can increase the amount of ripple voltage that your electronic speed control would otherwise see. So as long as you're not doing this, you're not increasing the potential for ripple voltage. If you do need to extend the leads of your electronic speed control, we've done a video on this. You can check that out on the channel. I'll leave a link in the description description below. Those are the three elements to check within your system to see if you have or should have a concern for ripple voltage in your setup. You gotta keep in mind that all electronic speed controls are designed to handle the basic setup. When we get into concerns relating around ripple voltage, this is when you're extending those leads, when you're really pushing the ESC hard, and you're using poor performing battery packs. All of these in combination could end up making it in such a way where there is risk to your electronic speed control due Due to ripple voltage. Now, if this still doesn't make you feel comfortable and you want to do something to make sure that you minimize the amount of ripple voltage, what you can do is you can add capacitor banks to your electronic speed control. You can use the exact same link that I'm linking below in order to go through that process. 
Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for the ripple voltage conversation. Now I do have a question for you guys about the charger power supply that you guys are using. Now one of the things that I have done many times in the past is I've modified power supplies that come from PCs or servers in order to work with your typical radio controlled charger. Would you guys want to see a video on the rough workings of how this is done? Uh, in addition to that, I also have a question because one of them I can't get to work and I don't know what the secret code is to actually get these things to switch on. So this is a perfect example of one that I use. I use it around the home if I'm just charging batteries. This way it kind of forces me to do it at 1C as I don't have my 1200 watt power supply. This is more along the lines of a, a couple hundred watts, but it allows everything to get charged and it is extremely cheap because it comes from old recycled computers. So that's something to keep in mind. The price point just simply cannot be beat on these power supplies, especially if you know someone who's getting rid of one of their old computers. Let me know in the comment section if this is something that interests you. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.